morning, folks. Welcome back. Um, it is Monday, the 25th. It is a very beautiful day outside. And we are going to finish off our course today in terms of lectures. That is. Um, this is the last section of the last unit. So we're here. We've made it. Throw your confetti in the air. No more lectures. This is the last one. Um, obviously, we still have work to do. Um, we are going to um, we are going to still do pro um, not a project a written response, uh, and then we still are going to do a final exam. Um, so keep in mind, I posted how the rest of this um, uh, I guess this unit or this course is going to run. It is on um, our D two L site. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. If you are one of those people that wants extra help. Um, and you want to do a you know a Zoom chat or a group Zoom chat with your friends? Please let me know. We can set that up so I can help you out with you know whatever it is you're you're struggling with, because uh, we're almost done. So uh, keep June twelfth in your mind because June twelfth is the last day I'm accepting any work. Um, my marks are due the following week, so I don't want to be scrambling with anything. So uh, if you have things that you want marked. Um, send them to me. I have a bunch of things I have to do um, marking wise. So there's a lot of you who've sent a lot of things in and I appreciate your patience with me um, going forward. So uh, if you if you send something and you notice I didn't mark it, um, patience. I will mark everything today and if you still don't see it, then you can let me know. Um, okay, but that's enough of my little introduction. We are going to um, start with the end. <laughs> Unit four. Uh, we are on student activity 30, your responsibilities in a globalized world. So this is very much, uh, we've shifted our attention. We've kind of focused on the historical. We've focused on the economic. we focused on the response to globalization. Now we're going to focus even further on you, your responsibility now. Because going forward, your generation, my generation, will be the ones that kind of run the show. Um, so for the so-called baby boomers or the boomers, um, they are on the decline. Ours, the generations that have come after, are going to be in positions of authority pretty soon. Um, so we have to understand our role in this world. Um, and I remember at the very beginning of the year, I told you, um, one thing I'm going to make you aware of is that you are on a fence about a lot of different things. Some of you have gotten off the fence, which is fantastic, and I strongly encourage you to. But when it comes to this question of globalization, you need to decide where you stand. You cannot sit on the fence anymore. When the world is changing, and if you're for it, um, then you've obviously picked your side. But if you are seeing things in your life or in your world that you do not like, and you say nothing, well, you are saying something. You are saying I'm okay with it. That is, this is the the thing that I want you to understand. This last um, section of this course is directed at you. And these, are, I'm, I'm going to go through and how you can be the change that you want to see in the world. Because one who complains and does nothing is just as bad as those who've done the wrong thing. That made sense, I think. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get this show on the road. Enough of my um, my uh, speech. Uh, this is page 11 in the workbook. Um, so let's start. When we talk about your responsibilities in the globalized world, we're talking about civic responsibilities. And these are duties that people have towards their communities. Now, when we say communities, it can be a very huge range of things. I can be talking about the micro, your, uh, you and your family. I can make it. I can extend it more to you and organizations that you're associated with. Or we can say the entire global humanity and the human community that exists between all of us across the seven continents that exist on our planet. Yes, I say seven. Excuse me, because Antarctica does have some scientists that stay there. Not all the time, but I bet you they're there now. So I say seven. 
Uh, some of these goals that civic responsibilities have and, and these duties can include things like providing humanitarian aid, justice for oppressed people, or helping the environment. That's why when we talk about the micro versus the macro, the simple thing of recycling and composting in our city is your is a duty and that is a responsibility that we all have. And if you do these sort of things, you are playing your part in changing this globalizing world. Um, these are all things individuals can be involved in. So like I said, you do not need to join the United Nations and become a peacekeeper and go to a war-torn country to keep the peace. Simply recycling is, a, is an example of your response to a globalizing world. Um, many believe there is a responsibility to ensure all people live in a free democratic, na in, in free democratic nations. So again, one way that you can do this is um, if you are seeing injustice in a country um, and you want to voice your opinion, some people do things like uh, po uh, po protests or boycotts. I tried to put those together and it, it sounded weird. Anyways, um, writing to your um, member of parliament, writing to your municipal uh, government and making your opinion aware, you're going to learn fairly quickly that um, a lot of people will believe uh, are in agreement. They just don't even know that people are out there. One thing that I would strongly encourage you, you all to do in some point in your lifetime, take a venture downtown. Go um, take the bus or go with family members and, and drive. I don't know what the street is, but it's near um, the city hall. You will see, and I've seen many times, different protests there for different reasons. Uh, some protesting our prime minister. There were some that were protesting oppression of people in Africa. You will see there are groups of people who support your ideas. You just need to be out there to realize it. And the fact that we have social media, we can see movements that have sprung up because of social media. The Me Too movement, uh, Black Lives Matter, these are two examples of movements that took social media and blew up and have done a lot of positive changes in our in our in the history of people so these are things that we need to understand our civic responsibilities um when now we're going to focus our attention municipal city municipal means city governments also have responsibility to their citizens such as providing clean drinking water public transportation electricity garbage and recycling um sometimes even those things which seem totally basic are not because there are uh, First Nations people who live an hour and a half uh, drive away from here, our city, who do not have clean drinking water. So it's not just a, oh, a, a developing world's problem. This is a developed country with people still not being able to drink um, and have access to clean drinking water. Um, and within that, we have two sort of sub definitions that we should focus on the responsible citizen and the global citizenship so a responsible citizen is a member of a society who embraces the fact that they have duties and obligations to that society these are people who see the world and are not shutting themselves off from this world they are seeing it as hey this is my responsibility so these are the people who take the initiative to do things like recycling or to do things like um um, join protests um, or um, advocate for people who are struggling in the world. Uh, these are people who even go do things like donate blood. These are people who see the world and they see that they are obligated to be a part of it in some way. Uh, there are a lot of people who have a lot of wealth who have started to, who give back to the community and see it as their duty to provide um, for people in situations. And then the idea of the global citizenship is being aware, being an aware contributing member of society when it comes to global issues. So when we look at things like uh, natural disasters that happen, uh, hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, the global community can respond in certain ways. And some people take it upon themselves to be a part of that um, that aid. So if, if, it, if it could be things like donating food, 
donating clothing, donating money, um, going to church and organizing prayers for these people. These sort of things, these are people who see themselves as global citizens. Um, it takes a lot of, when you talk about this idea of being a global citizen, um, there are things that will pull away from it. And these sort of things are um, like racism. Uh, racist ideas can pull away from this idea of a global citizenship that, hey, we are all the same. We all live on this planet together. Um, if there's no water, it's not that it's not like certain people are going to die. No, we all die. If there's no more air, we all die. That's that's the point that I'm trying to make here is that when we talk about um, global citizenship, things like racist ideas and policies can detract and pull away from this idea. Um, but when we talk about being the global citizenship and responsible citizen, you put those together, it's again, a part of our civic responsibilities. Businesses. Businesses are ever present in our world. Um, our, generate, our present world, we see many uh, transnational corporations. They have Span the globe, and they are in every, almost every country in the world. They have a role to play as well. Businesses have to balance their civic responsibilities and human rights with making money. So when I talked about this was again the first day of class, I brought up two things. We are going to focus a lot on human rights versus economic rights or economic prosperity or economic development. These are the, this is the sort of thing that companies need to start to think about. And I said that at the first day of class, and look, we're talking the last lecture of, um, of this year, and we're still talking about it. Because when a, when a business focuses on making money, it tends to push its civic responsibilities and human rights to the side. We saw that in, economic, we saw that in Unit 3, economic globalization, with things like sweatshops, with the way that... Um, people are paid for doing jobs that if it was in a developed country we would be making a hundred times more uh, or even 200 times more what they are making in developing countries so that would bring up this idea we talked about civic responsibilities now we have corporate responsibilities the moral obligation that businesses have to respect the community in which they operate that is again a beautiful definition it's, it's a beautiful uh, idea but in practice it's not always the case. Like I, like I said again when I introduced that uh, all those um, that little introduction thing we did the first uh, day. I talked about companies. A lot of companies pay workers um, very poorly, and there is the argument that this is not uh, a more, their their moral obligation is being um, not upheld. Um, because they're they're focusing more on making money rather than rather than helping uh, that community start to change. So, how can you take action? I talked about some basic ideas, but there are things and there are ways and there are strategies that we can be the change in this world that we want to see. Because here's the thing, like I said, your generation one day will be. The, the world leaders, you will be the entrepreneurs, you will be the um, heads of industry that are going to change the world forever. Right now, you're living in a world where the technology is cutting edge. You're looking at um, things that uh, are so cool and so um, advanced. When you're even my age, um, in like 15 years, you're gonna look at an iPhone and you're gonna laugh at how simple that was. When you're your parents' age, uh, or when you're your grandparents' age, we won't even be able to describe what the world will be like. Um, when I talk to um, people, like students, about what they wanna do with their lives, and, pe and, and some of you don't know what you wanna do, I can say this and I'll say it now so you'll all hear it. Some of you are gonna get jobs that don't exist right now in industries that are not even in someone's head because technology will go in that direction. So um, your responsibility will be 
the leaders of these of this new of this world, and, and you're gonna have to understand how to take and how to solve problems that maybe you didn't even um, create generations before you have created. So through coordination, uh, through coordinated efforts with others, people can work together to increase their influence, address global problems, and make changes. So for those of you that finished your um, your projects. You've, you've seen how uh, NGOs uh, have been created by ordinary people and have addressed global problems and have made social change. Um, working with formal organizations can often help in the process, for example, coordinating relief efforts for natural disasters. This is one way. There are grassroots where people just start up these ideas and run with them. This here, this idea of consumer activism is important. Customer um, consumers can affect the practice of large corporations by protesting or boycotting goods or services which are not providing are provided in a responsible manner. So, for example, uh, there has been actions by um, hu um, animal rights groups, so things like PETA um, and others, the Humane Society of whatever, because the Humane Society can go to Canada and so on and so on. Um, there have been some efforts to boycott um, the Canada Goose uh, jackets. So there are those jackets with the with the logo. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, because the fur lining, it comes from coyotes. And um, PETA, what PETA does is they do a lot of shock um, advertising where they will show you how animals are treated. Um, so they've, I've, I've seen videos where they show you um, how they catch um, coyotes, you know, they kill them and then they, and they take their fur. So they have, they've called for a boycott. So a boycott essentially is um, when you don't buy uh, things or you don't go to uh, certain places to affect the economic um, prosperity of that thing. So they've done that to try to change uh, the corporate um, attitudes towards, you know, killing the coyotes for their fur. Um, so that's how consumers can affect um, practice. People can take action through governments. Um, so this is, sorry, that was taking action through organizations. Now this is taking action through government. People can take action through government in many ways. One way that we can, you can do this, and you're going to do it uh, fairly soon, is through voting. So voting in elections is one way to affect government policy. Because if a government doesn't do um, things and promise things, then the people can change. They can vote for change. Uh, you can join a political party, write or uh, email letters to your elected representatives, and signing or starting petitions at other, are other ways uh, to get your voice heard. So these are, um, these are very non-violent ways. There are violent ways of, um, of getting uh, things done, and we call those revolutions. So... There have been revolutions throughout history. Um, you'll learn some next year. Uh, the French Revolution, the American Revolution, the Russian Revolution, these sort of things. These are ways that people have in the past tried to um, take action against the government. So that's just a little side note. Uh, government Act. Oh, I should probably disclaim that I don't want you to do any violent acts. Stick with the nonviolent. It works a lot better. Uh, case in point, um, look at India. Nonviolent got us two countries. Well, I guess three. Anyways, <laughs> uh, governments act to address global problems by making laws, funding government agencies, uh, applying diplomatic pressure on other countries, and by participating and funding IGOs. So, countries do um, work on a global scale. I mean, we look at our the current current world we live in. Um, all countries around the world are well, not all, but some of the ones that have access to very advanced medical fields are trying to create a vaccine. And the World Health Organization has said that it needs to be a collaborative uh, project. And once someone does have it, we need to share that with the world. So these are the sort of things that um, we talk about when we talk about governments acting in unison to address global problems as well. Now, this is a kind of a summing up of this idea, this concept of globalization. So this is kind of like, if you're sitting on the fence on the question of globalization, good or bad, these are the sort of camps that you can find yourself in. Globalization as a positive or a negative force. 
On the one side, we can see the anti-globalization activism, a movement to stop or slow the forces of globalization uh, for, their for, they, for their received negative social, economic, and political impact. So in this camp, you would talk about things like sweatshops. You would talk about things about exploitation of resources, of people, uh, uh, minority groups, indigenous groups. On the other side, there is the pro-globalization activism, a movement to increase globalization through positive social, political, and economic agreements. So we can talk about things like um, the development of uh, countries through the sharing of ideas, through the sharing of aid. Um, we can talk about the advances in technology, um, the wondrous things of how we brought this world, people closer together. Uh, for those of you that live in Canada who come from another country, through globalization, we can now, you can still talk to your family as if you are in the same country with them. And it's all thanks to um, globalization in a way. So, um, that's it for this uh, lecture. Um, I will um, post the written assignment on Wednesday. Um, so then I'll give you till obviously you can you have until June twelfth really to get it done. But try to get it done as quick as you can on June first. Remember, I'm gonna post three videos, three case studies. Uh, what it's going to be is I'm going to pull one from each unit. I'm going to talk about a specific thing. There'll be like a little, maybe a question to answer at the end. If you do all three, then you'll get three bonus marks for um, something that you missed. So for those of you that are, you know, struggling with the mark side of things, this may be um, helpful. Um, and on June 3rd, we'll, I'll give you your final exam and then you can work on that. So that's it for today. Um, I will see you on Wednesday. So um, enjoy the weather today. It looks really nice. And um, stay safe, as always. And I'll see you then.